Okay, we're gonna start with a story. And I'm 17 years old and I'm walking to the shops. And this is back in Blackpool, in the house that I grew up in. And just around the corner was a, a news agent that I used to go to, to buy sweets. And the Beano comic, actually. And on the way, yes, at 17 years old, I did that as well. Um, so on the way there, I see my best mate's brother, who was older than we were by about three years. And he had a car before we did. And he had this Ford Capri, beautiful Ford Capri, three litres, uh, stunk of fuel, leather seats. It was just a beautiful car. But the most important thing about this story is the horn on that car. Now, the reason the horn is important is because when I waved at him, he beeped his horn. And the horn was an aftermarket one. It was fitted afterwards and it, and it made this noise. It went... Bada, bada, in that rhythm, bada. But it wasn't just that note, which is a D, it was a, an F and a C either side of it, like that. I remember thinking, is it me or was that car? Did that car horn just play a D minor seven? And it was, it was the first time I realized in my life that other things outside of instruments could be musical. And I realized that I thought musically. It was a massive moment for me because you know how people hear voices in their head, normally scary people. I heard musical stuff in my head. And then this whole fantasy performance just developed on the walk to the shops. I imagine these two cars next to each other, the Ford Capri that he was driving, playing the D minor seven over here. And then wouldn't it be great if he got another Ford Capri over there that was detuned slightly and it played a G, that lovely musical call and response thing. And, and I imagined a drummer in between them. So you've got that kind of with this car over here and then this one. And a drummer in the middle giving it boom, I don't know what it was. I remember just sort of being in my own little world thinking how cool that would be to have a, a drummer in the middle of these two cars and playing this really funky tune with these two cars. I, I remember it now so vividly because it was such a, it was the first time I'd really had a creative idea that I developed in my head. I do it all the time now, but then it was the first time I'd done it. It was such an important day. And by the time I got back from the shops, there was orchestras, there was brass playing and everything. In fact, the brass part that I heard, and this sometimes happens, sometimes a brass part or any kind of part will just come to you. You'll go, oh, that would fit perfectly. Other times you've got so many ideas that you've got to spend a few days working through them and seeing which one fits best. But I heard this. That's the exact brass part I heard. I didn't do any developing on it. It just came out. And I was thinking that with this. kick bass it's got legs so I got home and I got straight into my bedroom and um, I had cola cubes with me I remember cola cubes I don't know why but when I hear the tune I can I can taste cola cubes it's, I must have just bought them uh, it's weird how your brain does that but um so I put my cola cubes down and I got that excited about writing this track because it was really funky it was like a sort of um it reminded me of like the average white band kind of they had that sort of that driving funk almost it was almost disco. It was getting to that place, 70s disco. Um, and Stevie Wonder was a huge influence when I was a kid. So I, this thing just started to develop. But I was trying to write it as a song. I was trying to put lyrics to it, and I was doing what I call doodling. I still doodle now. If I'm trying to write a melody for something, I always come up with the chords first. Uh, it's not, there's, there's normally a lyric that starts it. I'll think, oh, that'd be a nice title for a song. And I'll try and write a story based around that title. But nine times out of ten, I doodle. And that sounds like this. That's what I would do. Um, and then I would try and put lyrics to fit that rhythm. But with this one particular track, I couldn't. I couldn't find lyrics that would make it work, especially that, which is what I wanted as the main motif. It was like, why'd you go and do that for? I was like, nah, it doesn't work. Why'd you go and do that? I just couldn't make it fit. It just, it was, it was annoying me because the tune was so funky and so simple. It's such a basic thing. Why couldn't I make it work? And it was, it was doing my head in. So I just thought oh, I'll park it and I'll do it later. I do that all the time now, by the way. I have ideas all the time and I never finish them. But I've realized later in life that that's a good thing to have that hard drive or that archive full of all those ideas that are unfinished because eventually they will be finished. And I know that to finish like the battery in my light. I know that because uh, that's what happened with this theme tune. So six years later, it's CBBC. I'm on a show called Smile. And at the end of one of the shows on this Sunday morning, Billy McQueen, who was the owner of the company, the co-owner, uh, comes up to me and says, hey, guess what? We've got this new idea for a new show that we'd like you and Nev to be in. 
it's called Bear Behaving Badly and it's about you living in an apartment together. You know, there's a love interest over the corridor that you're in love with and there's a caretaker who's really angry and is allergic to Nev. And, we, you know, we've been working on it for a while now. We think it's going to be good. And I was like, yeah, it sounds amazing. Count me in. I, I, would, I would love to be a part of that show. And he said, you write music, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, can you write a theme tune for us? I was like, yeah, sure. Of course I can. I had no idea if I could. But I had my keyboard in the car. And I said, my keyboard's downstairs. Actually, I'll go and get it. And as I've said it, I've heard myself go, why did I do that? Why have I just put myself in a position where I've now got to prove myself? Because I'm going to look stupid because I've got no idea what I'm going to write. So I called Nev um, or Nev's personal trainer, who at the time was a guy called Lee. I said, mate, I said, I'm writing a song about Nev. Um, it's kind of a theme tune. and I, I, I want to try and make it about Nev. And I wondered what you would say would be his most defining noise that he makes. You know, what's his, what's, what makes what, what describes his character the best? Because he only had a few phrases that he said in the early days, like, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. And Lee said, well, what about na, 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 na? And I went, did you just sing that in D? He went, I don't know, because he, he's not musical. I went, and it was the first time I'd made the connection between that and six years previously, this Ford Capri's horn. Oh my God, it's going to work. Talk about serendipity. I love it when things like that happen, when moments come together in life that you didn't expect to marry together, but they just do, and they do it in a spectacular way. And I was like, Lee, you've no idea how much you've helped me there. And he said, Is it, does that work? And I said, does it work? I said, it's, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. He's, you know, he's a, he's a toddler who's always getting away with stuff. And that's the one noise that we learn. That minor third interval is the first thing we learn as human beings. Yes, done. It's in. Thank you very much. Lee, you've just helped me write a theme tune. Okay, fine. He went off and did his thing. He went roller skating, actually. I remember that vividly. So I, on the way up, I've got my keyboard under my arm. And uh, Billy was at his desk. And I said, oh, Billy, I've, I've got an idea. And he went, already? I went, yeah, yeah, I, th I, think, I think I've got it. And I'm, you know, Bertie Big Balls. Like, I've just, I've just written a theme tune in two seconds. But it was actually something that I'd written years ago. So I'm in the office. And um, I should point out here that I, back in the day, when everything was black and white and people walked fast, though I didn't have a computer. I didn't have Logic or any software to write music in. I only had the keyboard. So I actually plugged in the, the, the keyboard, a Korg Triton, to um, these PC speakers, which were awful. But I thought, if I can make it sound good on these, it'll sound good on anything. It's a bit of an NS10 anecdote there, for those of you who work in uh, music studios. NS10s are these really famous speakers that everybody has in their studios, and um, they're really not very good speakers. But if you can make something sound good through them, you're onto a winner. So um, I had these really dodgy PC speakers on the table. I had my Korg Triton, and I had to write everything inside the keyboard. It had a sequencer in it. So I could select all the sounds, and then what I would do is play the whole thing live. It's only about 30 seconds, but I'd play the whole thing live, select a different track, and then play the next thing live over the top. There was no, and there was no quantizing or correcting your timing on it. You had to just play it right, which is how I'd always recorded anyway, so it was, I was kind of used to it. So this thing just unfolded, and I can't even begin to tell you how I, I actually get goosebumps telling this story because it was everything just came together so well and I remember looking at these two people so Billy and his partner Maddie was sort of staring at me going that's it that's the theme tune thank you brilliant we didn't expect it to be this easy and of course it's not for a lot of people but it was just that I had this idea already which I never actually told them but um it turned out to be the theme tune's a bit behaving badly but the, the bit I, I struggled with was that I really wanted that that little car horn nod I wanted that rhythm, but it was too, it's too accented, it's too staccato, it's too aggressive. So I thought, what if me and Never sort of walking along the street, and I'll use the same chords, and it became this. And there you have it. I've now got all the elements that I need to make this thing work. The only thing I didn't have was the sound for the na 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 na. So I found this thing called a saw lead. This isn't the actual sound. I've got new sounds now, and I don't have the original keyboard, but they're as similar as I can get them. So that, it sounds really aggressive when you hear it on its own. But I wanted it to stand out. I wanted it to be, you know, the, the main theme of this theme tune. So I thought today is a little bit of a treat. I'll, um, I'll recreate the theme tune. I'm going to write it with some new sounds. I need to tell you about the drums. I'm going to write it the way I did then. So now, if I was to put drums down, I would just get a drum loop and just find some sort of break beat or floor beat and just put that in. I didn't do that back then. I actually played the drums myself using the keyboard. And I played, I, the drums took me a while. It's very hard to get drums in time, especially if you've got some sort of funky and acoustic thing going on. So um, I'm going to do this as I did it back then. This is a little nod to me, some 
what will it be now, 15 years ago, 15, 16 years ago. So um, here is the theme tune to Bear Behaving Badly, the way I wrote it back then. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Here goes. So there you have it. That was the theme tune to Bear Behaving Badly some 15 years later. Uh, but that's exactly how I recorded it all those years ago. That was a nice little trip down memory lane for me. I should probably address the elephant in the room for a second as well. I've been off YouTube for a while uh, and people have always asked me why I don't have a channel and why I don't produce stuff. And I think the real reason, if I'm being completely honest with you, is that I was a TV presenter for 20 years of my life and it, it took up a huge chunk of my time. And you, you, you end up sacrificing a huge chunk of your life to do that job not complaining, I had the best time. But um, sitting in front of a camera, just, it, I just it's not something I wanted to do for a while. I wanted a break. So I wanted to be a director, write some more music, film some adverts, all that kind of stuff. So for the past couple of years, I've been setting up a company where I now produce films and commercials for people as a director and as a filmmaker and as a, as a musician. Um, but I have missed this. I have missed this, this connection. Um, it was a huge part of my life for a long, for a long time. So I'm going to try and do a video every week. And it'll be things like, uh, I'll be talking about photography, I'll be talking about cinematography, I'll be talking about how to film things uh, if you want to make your own content. Incidentally, I'm actually doing um, my own course, a presenter's course. It's running from the 27th of December, so soon, till the 2nd of Jam. It's in Manchester. And basically, we spend the day in a room together and I'll teach you how to be a presenter, how to make your own content for your social channels. Um, it's with the Presenters Academy. I'm going to put a little link in the description so you can uh, you can click on it and have a look. And if you want to join in, then give us a shout, and I'll um, yeah we'll spend the day together, and I'll um, I'll teach you some stuff that I know. It it could be quite fun. But anyway, in the meantime, I'm just going to create a video every week, and um, and see what happens. I'm going to review the DJI Mini Mavic next week, which is a great little drone that a friend of mine bought me for my birthday. A beautiful person. And um, I've been flying it every other couple of days and uh, got some incredible footage from it. And that's what I'm going to try and do. I'm kind of sucking it and seeing it at the moment. I'm just, I'm just making stuff that I enjoy to make. And if you like watching it as well, that's a bonus. But I'm not bothered about growing a YouTube channel or having subscribers or any of that stuff. It's nice that you're here. And if you want to watch what I'm producing, then that's great. I'd, I'd love to, uh, to do more and I'd like to, uh, to hear from you. Put your comments in the section and let me know what you think. Let me know what you'd like to see. And... Um, yeah, let's let's see what happens moving forwards. Um, it's for me, it's just fun. It's a hobby, and I'm enjoying myself. I really enjoyed tonight. I enjoyed doing this for you. Um, it was a real, a really nice trip down memory lane for me. And um, yeah, if you liked it, great. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you next week.